Hello, my name is Nick Harding and this is my latest book called Sunsphere, which is a tongue-in-cheek send-up of the Da Vinci Code and similar sort of faux historical uh, novels. Um, it's essentially a... well, I was inspired a little bit by Tristram Shandy and Umberto Eco's Foucault's Pendulum. Um, very much tongue-in-cheek uh, and it involves a grand conspiracy uh, that centres on the Hellfire Club and Venice. Uh, the main protagonists end up on a quest for, you know, on a quest to discover three keys that may unlock the secret that's hidden in the gold sphere that sits atop the Dugana de Mari in Venice on the Grand Canal. From that point, I based a grand conspiracy theory uh, that spans the centuries, um, in involving a grand secret society called the Ordines of which are only ever three, so there can be no hung decision uh, between the uh, controllers of the secret society. And they are directly opposed to the Roman Catholic Church, who spent the last millennia, uh, if not longer, trying to destroy them. And, of course, this has uh, forced the Ordines underground. And, essentially, the Ordines have been controlling history uh, for the last 1,700 years or so. And they were set up by three Roman senators who were concerned about the new religion that was sweeping through the Roman Empire and decided they wanted to keep the old gods safe from this new religion called Christianity. Uh, and what they did was they decided that they were going to uh, create this order that would protect the old ways of uh, looking at the world. But then as time progressed, the old gods obviously disappeared and they turned more to reason and the Enlightenment. And what I'm suggesting in this book is they were behind the Renaissance uh, and the Enlightenment um, and set themselves up against the Roman Catholic Church for all that entire period. And of course the Church, of course, uh, have not wanted this or liked it and spent their time uh, attacking the Ordines. And there's essentially this secret war going on in the background. I wanted to sort of take the uh, sort of gentle knock at the, the likes of the Da Vinci Code. Um, not necessarily because I disagree entirely with the book, because um, I think any book that, that, that has a good idea that, uh, that 80 million people read and upsets certain people I think is a great idea. What I was really interested in tackling was the idea that uh, there's history and then there's alternative history and uh, that historians have spent their time researching and learning about real history to a certain extent, separating the wheat from the chaff. And it seems to me that more people are interested in the chaff than they are the wheat, as it were. History is often written by those in power and the victors of course um, but yet running alongside it is this a sort of alternative view of um, historical reality so it's a tongue-in-cheek sort of knock at that um, and it's a sort of a literary fiction that I've taken although although it's tongue-in-cheek is I've, I've sort of taken written it seriously and uh, on the way it's sort of knocking certain pretensions of the uh, of the genre yeah, essentially, although it's, there's, there's a humorous element to it, um, I could have written the thing sort of, you know, as a knockabout farce, but I didn't. I decided to create it as a standalone work of fiction. Uh, essentially, it's a book that can be read on many levels. Um, there's a serious content in it. Uh, I've sort of taken genuine historical facts and woven the grand conspiracies. Uh, in fact, I've taken my favourite conspiracy theories and sort of woven them into the story. Uh, from flying saucers to the JFK assassination, uh, Freemasons running the world, you know, the Jewish conspiracy, uh, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, all the sort of all the usual standard uh, conspiracy theories that are trotted out. Um, I've sort of woven them into this sort of grand, grand thriller. Uh, the book's sort of constructed around a kind of maze or a labyrinth, where the story takes the reader down dead ends, uh, little blind alleys. Um, possibilities of, well, maybe things that might happen in the sequel. Um, and it's also a two-level narrative between a, an airport novel written by a writer called Mark Arden um, and the surrounding novel, which is the, the, the narrative in which the investigators work. And as the story progresses, they begin to realise there are parallels between what they're discovering and the novel that uh, one of the characters introduces to the main protagonist. Um, and it suddenly begins to sort of uh, dawn on them 
that maybe this airport novel is in fact true or is based on real events. There'll be the alternative history market, Dan Brown and, and the clones that come in, uh, that followed that. And essentially where I'm slotting the book is on sort of the edge. Uh, so it's very tongue-in-cheek, but it can also be read as a, as a sort of thriller a la Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code. Um, but uh, as I said, it's very tongue-in-cheek and shouldn't be taken too seriously, uh, unless you want to, of course. Some of the, as I mentioned, some of the, um, the story elements are, wor are working their way into a sequel. Uh, called The Devil's Cathedral, uh, which is based in the Piedmont in Italy. And I've taken a number of the themes and the Ordines and uh, and the same characters on a parallel adventure um, that's directly related to what's happened in Sunsphere. And there's a grand revelation at the end of that, which um, which basically reveals the mystery behind Sunsphere and The Devil's Cathedral. Um, but obviously you'll have to wait and uh, read this one and then the follow-up.